Chapter 9, Breathe, Season 2, Finale. It was scary, Claudia, how you acted. I know, and I am so sorry. Ezra's not going to hurt you, he's too nice. I'll be safe. Is this Bantha going to be okay just roaming the town? I kind of have a way with animals, and Banthers are actually pretty friendly. They like praise, compliments, and a friendly scratch under the chin every now and then. Just like hey, me. Hey, that's like me. Yeah. <laughs> Man, no one scratched my chin in a long time. Wanna go up there? <laughs> okay, I guess. <laughs> I should end this right now. Throw the mirror into a river and cut you off forever. You won't. Nah. There's something that you want very badly. But something or someone stands in your way. I... I am having a problem getting some people to listen to me. To hear the importance of what I'm saying. Weird. Does he actually have some knowledge about that? Or is he just doing like the, the fortune teller thing? What do he say? There's something you want very badly, but something or someone stands in your way. I mean, yeah. Who does that not apply to? And then Varian's like, yeah, there's like this council and they don't listen to me. <laughs> I actually have the same power Erebos has. Watch, I'm going to do it to you right now, okay? You're generally a person who tries their best, but deep down you know you could probably be doing a little bit more to get your life ahead. You have a naturally independent nature, but there's some part of you that desires to be liked, desires to be needed. There are so many great things about you that you feel are just not properly recognized by the world. But one day they will be. You do your best to navigate life in the best way you know how, but sometimes you doubt your decisions. You can get along well with your friends, but sometimes you just need alone time to recharge. How'd I do? <laughs> Put me in a mirror. Who are these people? They are kings and queens. Oh, Varen. The leaders of the Just other his guts. kingdoms. Then we will have to get their attention. Funny how this scene started with Varen looking for information from Erebos and ended with Varen just spilling his guts. All his emotions just came leaking out. See, this is what I'm talking about, right? Like magic. That was magic in a way. No? There were no stones involved, but it was power. I found out something. My dad. Claudia knows too, everyone knows. My mom and dad split up. I remember hearing them fight a lot at night after we went to bed. And then one day, they told us mom was moving back to Del Bar, where her family was from. And then they said, we had to choose. Oh my god, that's awful. She said I had to stay with Soren, that this was my home and my brother and I needed each other. Hmm. I think she needed to leave for herself, to be happy, somehow. You might have noticed my dad is pretty intense. <laughs> I'll say. When you grow up, sometimes there are changes you don't expect. Everyone's repeating this line. Callum told me that. You I are told so him that. lucky to have a brother like Callum. I know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and <laughs> oh. I'm lucky to have my brother. Soren is a doof, but he's my doof. <laughs> this is so heartwarming. I know he would do anything to protect me, and I would do anything for him. I'm glad to see this. I'm glad to see Claudia have some warmth towards Soren. Because they have a good dynamic, like they're funny. But I feel like that's not something that really has been explored that much, their bond. And I think that's a huge enhancer for their characters. It could be that it was just unspoken, right? Or that they were taking each other for granted until Soren had this accident, right? That, that makes some sense. But yeah, I'm loving this Claudia Ezra dynamic. It's sort of an odd pairing, but it works really well. Because we haven't really seen them together much either. But Claudia is sort of a good older sister figure. Ezra, you don't just have a way with animals. You could talk to them, can't you? Very observant. I need you to help me find something in the forest. If I can find milk fruit, maybe I can help Soren. Breathe. Breathe. <gasps> Callum, you need to breathe. It is. It's his mother. Sometimes you just need to focus on the present. Take a deep breath and just be. <gasps> I just want you to be okay again. Callum! What's going on? To know something truly and deeply, you must know it with your head, hand, and heart, mind, body, and spirit. I love you with all of myself. Hey, I do feel better. <laughs> My cat is scratching the hell out of me right now. I... <gasps> oh, uh, look, you're awake now. You're even looking cheery. And is that a twinkle in your eye? He lost the dark circles. I understand the Sky Arcanum. 
Really? Oh, that's why the thing was activating. This is where the squirrel said we should go. There, I see it. A milk fruit bush. Wait, did he just say this is where the squirrel said we should go? <laughs> that took me a minute. This does open a lot of strange doors. <laughs> you can talk to any animal. I can talk to animals too, see? What do you think of the show so far? Look, Claudia, there's a family of deer here. I almost forgot how deer love milk fruit. Yes. Oh, no. What is she going to do to the deer? The whole world is like a giant primal stone, and we're inside it. I'm inside sky magic, but it's also in me. I thought I had to find my wings, but that's just it. I am the wing. I think I got what he's saying. Moment of truth. So I don't know whether or not Callum will be successful here. I have a feeling he will be, but this is something I like. I mean, it's kind of a trope, right? Like the power was inside you all along. But I think the reason for the cliche is because there's some truth in that. Part of the insight I think about this is that when we think about life, it's hard to visualize the perfect goals. It's hard to visualize the perfect self-identity. And so we sort of like put substitutes there. Like we think that if I achieve X or if I get X, then I will be the kind of person that I want to be, or I'll feel the way I want to feel. But there's sort of a deception in that. And that deception is that there's any like one thing or one state or collection of things or states that will make you feel like you want to feel, if that makes sense, or be who you want to be. You know, it's like chasing money or like status or fame. They won't make you complete. There's an inner journey that has to happen as well. But that being said, the journey towards those things is essential to finding those things in yourself. Like you can't just sit there and tell yourself you're great, right? You have to actually go out in the world and find out what greatness means and like clash with things and overcome them in order to gain insight. And then that insight can be applied more usefully and more directly to like the things that you actually value. You know, you, you sort of discovered yourself in a way and it's a very difficult process. And Callum is a great example of that because he's so fixated on one thing, right? To the point where without that thing, he doubts himself and it causes him a great deal of psychic conflict but then that conflict leads to him sort of having a crash and reflecting and thinking and that leads to insight and then the insight applies to the thing he wants but then also he learns something more broadly about himself and he emerges as a better person usually a strong desire will lead me to an experience that leads me to have a better understanding of myself and the result is even better than the the desired thing that i initially aimed for and that's part of why i value experience so highly it's not just a matter of like sitting and reflecting it's like you meeting the world and the and then gaining insight from the the experience because the world will always give you feedback as long as you're willing to listen to it and as long as you're willing to go to dark places like Callum is Let's see if I can really do this. He can do it. There we go. Good job, Callum. Aspero. Beautiful. First known human magic user. I'm so sorry that I didn't tell you. I, I tried to, but I just couldn't. Good. Good. This is what I want. Now we're united. I'm so happy that the lies and deception are sort of out of the way now. At least <laughs> the lies that we started with. Now I feel like the characters are finding themselves in each other in, in a way that I like. Now I want to see what they can do with this unity. And not just Callum, Ezra, and Rayla, but also Soren and Claudia. It's getting very exciting. I'm sorry, little one, but you are agile, young, and alive. It wasn't really about the fruit, was it? The fruit was just bait. Claudia? What are you doing? Uh oh. Would you like me to use dark magic on you, Soren? Sure, Claudia. I can move my toes. I forgot how much I love wiggling them. <laughs> Suck it, modern medicine. Oh, my strong, powerful thighs. <laughs> uh oh, he's back to his old self. I can feel again. Ah, ah. <sighs> Claudia. Clots. So it takes a huge toll on her, too. You're gonna be better now. That's all that matters. When you told me assassins were coming for Dad, I ran away and hid in the walls. And when I found out Dad was gone forever, I ran away again. But I can't run away from growing up. Now that you're King Ezrin, are you gonna start saying wise things like that all the time? He's always been wise, though. When you grow up, you have to face things you're not ready for. Wait, what? I'm not going with you to Zadia. He's going back. You'll find his mom, and Zim will take his place in Zadia. Just like I have to take mine. Ezra. That's very responsible and all, but I feel like we're going to need you to do some animal talking. Who's going to explain everything to the dragon? What a little man. <laughs> I feel like he'd be a great king. He should not... Uh, oh, I, I got a great match for him. Anya. He and Anya would be a great pair. Ezrin, 
Are you sure? I'll miss you, Rayla, but I'll see you again. I just realized I talked about how, like, I'm so excited to see what they could do together with their newfound unity. And now Ezrin's leaving. I respect it, though. Respect the choice. I love you. I love you, too. I'm sorry I couldn't help you learn to fly, but I know you'll get it soon. You're taking bait, right? Yeah, there we go. He's got his big map back. Those who fail tests of love are simple animals. They deserve to be motivated by fear. Oh no. This guy's just telling Viren everything he wants to hear. Nice. Viren's creating new villains. Pretty cool. Bring terror to Delbar, to Neolandia, to Evanir, and to Durin. Who would have guessed Erevos, the Dark Wizard, would have been a bad influence on Viren? I'm convinced Erevos' best skill is just psychology, because we haven't seen him do any magic except for making an insect walkie-talkie. But he's getting Viren to do all this stuff, and there's no way he's doing this just out of, like, charity. Erevos definitely has his own game. I can't believe we're almost to Zadia. Something bad's gonna happen. There's gonna be a giant cliffhanger. Hold on! <laughs> there's sort of a trick to it. I knew it wasn't gonna be that simple. It's like Indiana Jones. Uh oh. I feel like they're gonna meet resistance halfway or something. I see he's still wearing the thing. The walkie-talkie. Gotta fix my face with some butterfly crack. They've come for you. Do as I tell you. Prepare for battle. Lord Viren! Open it for them. Whoa. Nice. Hell yeah. <laughs> I mean, no, this is terrible. Stop it, Viren. <laughs> but how much control does Erevos have, exactly? No, King Harrow! <laughs> Isn't that a meme? It's like an arrow to the knee. I used to be an adventurer like you, and I took an arrow in the knee. I have all the power I need! Stop! I see. He's a fair weather friend. You have betrayed me. No. I will stay with you. Oh no, it is like Parasite. Next thing you know, his hand's gonna be using the computer. We need to hurry. If the sun rises, we won't be able to see the moon runes. Run! Why are you stopping? I can see something. What? They have a psychic connection? That is some next level level power. Okay, Zim, you can do this. How is he doing this? You can do this, Zim. Woo! He's flying. Woo! You're doing it. You're flying. <laughs> Poor Corvus. <laughs> Nice. There you go. Yeah! We did it! We made it across! Yeah. Nice. Welcome to Zadia. If I may be so bold, you're a weird king, King Ezra. <laughs> I know. <laughs> He's the man. So much flying related things in this episode, right? Callum talks about being the wing. The dragon flies to block out the sun. Ezrin flies on Corvus's shoulders. An arrow flies into Viren's knee. We both failed our secret missions, Claudia. But you found each other. We're not coming back empty-handed. It's the horn you cut off the dragon. Right. Failed missions, mad dad. But dragon horn means magic? Maybe dad not mad. Perfect haiku. Yes! Ah! That was amazing! Oh no. It's him. Soul Regan. And cliffhanger. Yeah, I got it this time. 
Fool me a thousand times, shame on you. <laughs> Love this episode. Callum gets magic. The dragon learns to fly. They get into Zadia. That's exciting. Claudia and Soren I, are never going to be the same. And I'm, I'm excited about that because I've been like kind of waiting for this. I've been waiting for them to like kind of wake up. Really nice finish to the season. I agree with what a lot of you guys have been saying that season two is way better than season one. For a lot of season two, the focus was less on their daily activities and like, you know, their travel and more on them like kind of grappling with inner issues, them learning about each other, different characters converging with conflicting priorities. The pacing felt a lot better. We also got those amazing flashbacks right Th those are great i think those were much needed and one thing this season did a great job of doing was it started with a very kind of simple idea of let's just get the dragon to zadia and that's still there but it gets increasingly more intricate and the possibilities seem to just keep getting bigger you know before viren was about just consolidating power to have a, you know to defend the humans against the zadians or the elves now it's more than that it's not just about him protecting the kingdom he's sort of you know speak of slipping into the dark side he's just let himself rocket to the bottom of this dark chasm and it probably feels really good as callum was saying so now the villainy i feel is of a different scale and we have erevos sort of like pulling the strings it seems a little bit increasingly more as time goes on and instead of claudia and soren sort of just being people who have witty banter as they chase the the kids they're becoming more like fully realized characters who have values and priorities and things like that and so it's a lot of fun to watch really awesome stuff my predictions for season three is that the true nature of the evil will be revealed there are going to be higher stakes than just the war that's my feeling also i feel like callum and rayla are going to experience some unexpected difficulties in Zadia. So far we've seen that humans are intolerant towards elves. I doubt that only goes one way. I bet Callum's going to have a lot of problems with the elves too. And we're going to have Callum exploring the magic some more. We're going to have Ezrin presumably getting back to the kingdom and coming into conflict with Viren, Or maybe not because he's, he's in jail. I don't know, it could go any number of ways, but I'm excited to see where it goes. But that's it for season two. I'll see you guys next week for the start of season three.